I can't believe that I'm saying this, but we finally have wheels and tires for the 308. It's on the ground, it rolls around, and I am so stoked with how it's turning out. And if you've been watching this build since the beginning, you know just how many hoops we've had to jump through to try to get wheels and tires in hand for this project. I've been waiting so, so long for this moment. And believe it or not, the wheels on the car right now still aren't that same old school Japanese set we sent out 10 months ago to have cut apart and rebuilt. Still don't have those. But thankfully, about a month ago, I reached out to my friends at Rotiform Wheels, told them I need some sort of lifeboat, I need to get rescued, we need wheels for this project, and they stepped up to the plate. They delivered a beautiful set of 18 by 10 and a half and 18 by 12 ROCHs. The outcome is incredible. I cannot wait for you guys to see this thing. Let's go put it together. This is admittedly a dramatic take, but it's hard to put into words just how special an unmarked box can be. 17 months of hard work has brought us to this point right here. What we have here is a set of Rotiform ROCHs, and they measure out to 18 by 10 and a half for the front and 18 by 12 inches in the rear. Rotiform is the same brand that sponsors the Ferraris that just podiumed at the 24 Hours of Le Mans last week, and so they are right at home on a Ferrari like this. The design that we decided upon pays tribute to the iconic five-spoke of the Ferrari F40 LM, but with a twist. But as good as they look on the workbench, they look even better wrapped in tires. We're using Nitto's NT01 Competition R Comp. The fronts measure out to a 275-35 R18, while the rears are an impressive 315-30-18. That's nearly twice as wide as the factory tire this car came with back in 1981. The wheel and tire package as a whole is what connects this car to the ground, and it will give it an unprecedented level of grip, compliance, and performance that I don't think Enzo Ferrari ever had in mind for a car like this. In one of the most anticipated moments of my automotive career, it's finally time to put the Ferrari down on the ground for the very first time, and for me to show you what we've been working towards for all these months. I'm a firm believer that wheels make or break a car. They are without question one of the most important design choices that goes into a build, and they will help to form the first impression someone walks away with the very first time they see your car. With that in mind, although there is a show wheel build in the works, it felt only right to reveal the car on its track setup. So here is the car now known as the 244 GTK. All right, we're rewinding a little bit. This is well before I recorded what you guys just saw. This is the past. We can time travel thanks to video editing. The truth is, I already set this car down once yesterday and it looked terrible. All of the alignment, everything was off. The camber was off on all four corners. The back end was like tucking tire. The front end is skyjacked. The toe is like way out in the front. I mean, every aspect of this thing is off, including look how off-center the rear wheel is in the wheel well. I've got a lot of stuff to fix because it's all just kind of thrown together. And I didn't record it because I knew that would happen. But now that you guys have seen it and I've gotten to kind of do the unveiling, now let's go through and fix everything because it's an important step. It took two full days of work to get the Ferrari to look like this. I had to begin with all of the issues at the back end of the car. For starters, as you can see, the wheel offset is quite sunken. There's a lot of room to account for here. And on top of that, as mentioned, the rear wheel is quite off-centered in the rear wheel well, so we need to figure out how to fix that as well. Thankfully, it's not nearly as big of an issue as it might sound like. We use these misalignment spacers attached to the heim joints at the base of all of our control arms. Currently, they center the heim joints within each heim joint mount, just like you see here. But if we chuck one of these misalignment spacers in the lathe and shorten it, and replace the other with a longer one, we can offset the heim joint inside of its mount. 
If we do this for all four Heim joints in the same direction, we can offset all of the rear suspension forward in the wheel well with just some basic machining. And best of all, it'll have no adverse effects on suspension geometry. There are a lot of advantages to using misalignment spacers, and this is just one of them. To solve our wheel offset issue, it's as simple as using some spacers. And this was a conscious decision I made when ordering the wheels, because I'd rather be too conservative than too aggressive. Now I don't have the exact wheel spacers that we need on hand, but thankfully some old 5x114 spacers I had in a box can be opened up for the center bore and used for mock-up purposes so we can let H&R know exactly what we need. From there, it's just a matter of installing our new parts and getting all of the adjustments and alignments into place. Nearly every aspect of the suspension is adjustable since we built it from scratch, which means we need to dial in things like the rear toe, the camber, the caster, and of course, the ride height. This was an incredibly laborious process of getting everything dialed even to a very loose baseline, but it's finally done and we're looking good. The front end needed only a fraction of the work as we spent time aligning most of it in a previous episode. What was really rewarding is the fact that all of the measurements we took regarding scrub radius and tire clearance worked. Although it's only by fractions of an inch, everything clears as it turns through its range of motion, and that's exactly what we needed. And because I knew I'd want to step back and see the car as complete as possible, I figured why not finally install our headlight buckets and headlight grills. We updated the look of the grills by powder coating them black in a previous episode, as well as all of the hardware and supporting bracketry, which means we should have mostly new parts as all of this stuff goes back into the car. It'll have to be removed eventually once we go in for final bodywork and paint, but I'm excited to see it put together nonetheless. It's been a while since we've talked headlights. The buckets will be going back into the car as empty shells. We won't be installing the factory headlights or the pop-up motors. I'll be locking these covers in the down position, and instead, we'll have to come up with a lighting solution that'll be hidden in the front grille of the car. But I'm a fan of how this nose looks all closed up. So the car is on the ground, and it rolls around, and it looks absolutely amazing. So what's next? Well two things. One is to finish up this episode, I want to put together a checklist. I think we're finally at the point of figuring out what's left in this build, what parts we need to order, and what we need to do in order to actually drive this thing. But first, I just want to take and share a moment with you guys, share my excitement, and enjoy this moment right here because it only happens once and then it's gone and it's back to the grindstone. But to get to experience this car on the ground for the first time, to get to see it, to feel its presence as at least some form of a finished vehicle and not just a shell floating on a dolly for the first time is absolutely incredible. I am so excited about this build. I'm so excited about the way that it's taking shape. I love the way that it's turning out. And it's just such a special moment. I feel like I've been working towards this very specific point for, I don't know, a year and a half. And I'm stoked that you guys are here to enjoy it too. Thank you to everybody that has watched from the beginning of the build, or if you're just one episode in, I wouldn't be able to build this car and I wouldn't be making these episodes if you guys weren't watching along. And so I feel like we're all on this journey together and here we are, it's finally on the ground. It finally feels like a real car. I can finally see that finish line and it is closer than ever. And I'm just stoked. This is such a special moment in the build. It really is, at least to me, so. Thank you guys, and I'm just gonna enjoy this moment right here for a minute. I'm just gonna look at the car, I'm gonna stare at it for a few. Let's check it out one more time. Now I'm hoping you can't blame me because I simply can't stop looking at this thing. And admittedly, there's a lot of work left to do, including a lot of finish work. The details, the edges, the fit and finish. Things like dialing in the wheel fitment to get it perfect, but making sure it'll clear the fiberglass fenders at race pace or shaping those fiberglass fenders so that they're nice, smooth, straight, and fit the Pininfarina design body of the 308 itself. We should close in the rear wheel arches. We've got a diffuser to mount, a rear bumper and grill to make. There's so much work left here to get this car to look the way I truly want it to, but this is the first taste of something special, and I couldn't be more excited for it. So now I wanna talk about what we need in order to drive the car. We need a checklist, a final checklist, because I think we're close enough for one. Clearly the car is more done than ever before. Now I'm not gonna worry about all the things that aren't gonna help us drive it, 
body work, for example, paint, that kind of stuff, we're pushing that to the end. Same thing with all the interior finish work. It's not important right now. First on the list, we need axles for this thing to move under its own power. We talked about that in the last episode. Jump back and watch it if you haven't. I'll link in the corner. And second is we need brakes. Obviously, we have calipers and rotors on the car, but we don't have any brake lines, fluid reservoirs, or any brake fluid. So we need to get all of that stuff set up and functioning. I'll show you guys how we're going to do all that in an upcoming episode. There's some odds and ends that we need to accomplish. We need to finish the cooling systems in terms of getting them bled, uh, setting up the PDM so that we can bleed them and get fluid running through the entire car. We also need to build a scavenge tank for the oil turbo system. Some of you guys pointed out that I can't actually pull directly from the bottom of the turbo, which I had no idea about, and I'm glad you guys let me know, because we don't want to kill a turbo right off the bat. Other than that, I think we're looking at kind of smaller detail things. We have a lot of aero components still to mount. Those won't really help us drive it, but they'll finish out the car. So we're going to get those things mounted and installed. Lots of brackets to design, things to make work, that kind of stuff. And then there needs to be some discussion about a roll cage. Now, we built a roll bar for this car in a previous episode. I was really opposed to a cage because there's not much room inside the car. I want to drive this car on the street, and a cage on the street isn't safe if there's not ample headroom. It's very dangerous. However, I'm realizing this car is going to be a floppy noodle and it's also going to be very fast and from a safety perspective I would like to have a roll cage in there on the track. So I've really got to do some soul searching and think about what I really want to do with this car, make a decision, and get to work building a cage if we're going to do that. So got to do some thinking there. I'm not sure yet. Other than that, like I said, small detail stuff. That's the short list. That's the checklist that I want to get working on. So so I'm going to get to work. I've got an episode that I'm working on for the end of the week. Subscribe if you haven't. I don't want you to miss it. I don't want you to miss when this car actually drives for the first time. We are rapidly approaching it. And of course, thank you as always for your guys' support. I'll catch you at the end of the week.